What's up? This is Tom. We're going to continue our discussion on the Twins starting rotation, their starting pitching, and a couple of guys that came up in some interesting articles over the Athletic. We've got listed here in Jordan Balazovic and Sonny Gray. But first, what did you all have to say after we did this live stream that talked about the starting pitching? I put this poll out on my channel uh, community page here, and you guys voted. I was wondering who you thought would be the Twins' best starting pitcher, their staff ace this season. And the guy who got the most overwhelming support on here was Joe Ryan. I don't think there's a bad answer here, to be completely honest. And the only reason why Kent Maeda is not in included here is you can only choose four options on YouTube polls. But I had some people on Twitter giving me grief that Kenta wasn't an option because I think they would have sent him some love as well. But if we look over at the Athletics, speaking of which, um, Aaron Gleeman threw out his depth chart. And I, I'm, I'm not sure if he means these to necessarily be a ranking or more of how he expects the twins to be handling the depth chart didn't really differentiate between the two maybe there's not a difference maybe it's the same and same but he listed Sonny Gray as the number one starter um, I think certainly in terms of how the uh, the team might shake things out uh, that might make sense you know he's the most veteran guy uh, kind of the, the most established guy on the staff although a couple of these other guys have been around for quite a while now multiple years uh, but, I mean, if you were to ask me who I th I've thought about this more, and again, I don't think there's a bad answer, but I think I would go with Pablo Lopez. I think there is a lot of uh, things around Pablo, Pablo Lopez that you can focus on the negative and be concerned about. You know, his poor second half, uh, his history of shoulder injuries, the fact that he's primarily a two-pitch pitcher, four-seam fastball and a changeup. But kind of if we shed those things away, he's been the best uh, pitch for pitch, the best a pitcher of this group the past two seasons combined. Um, I think uh, um, Tyler Malley hasn't beat a bit on Fangraph's war, um, so he'd probably be my number two. Those actually would be my top two guys. Um, but, again, I think with Lopez it's really easy to focus on the negatives and not see the positives. This is a really uh, a guy coming off his best season, a very smart pitcher. Uh, and a guy, again, even though it's primarily two pitches, he has other pitches that he can work off of those, and I think he's a really smart guy. I think hooking him up with Christian Vasquez, and I think you could apply this to anybody, but I think Christian Vasquez is going to help. It's a t fun question to debate. So if you've got takes, let me know in the comments on this video of how you kind of shake things out in the rankings. Um, and then the other art athletic article I wanted to mention was that Keith Law uh, provided his top 20 Twins prospects. Um, I know Keith, there's kind of a, a range of opinions on Keith Law. And I, I like him a lot. His lists are always really unique and kind of individual to him. He kind of sticks with guys, which I guess I shouldn't be too surprised here. Uh, he can, If he doesn't like somebody, it's really hard for, for to get him to move. And if you really like somebody, it's kind of the same way. And I think that's what's going on here with Jordan Balazovic. I'm not going to give you the whole ranking because, again, The Athletic is a, a paywall site. I want you to go and support them. They do a lot of great work. Uh, but Jordan Balazovic, 7th on Keith Law's ranking, the number one twin starting pitching prospect. Jordan Balazovic is on Keith Law's list still. Um, I had Balazovic 20th. I think I had him as the ninth pitcher on my list or something like that. I, I'm not giving him a free pass for last year, but Keith is uh, inclined to do so. Um, you know, And he talks some about that knee injury that we heard about um, and how that probably potentially have impacted things and you know uh to be honest if if, if you are going to give him a free pass from last year he probably does deserve to be either at the top or toward the top of twin starting pitching prospects because he was uh you know on a path to be something pretty special there was definitely some kind of cracks in the armor showing in 2021 uh that you they were easy enough to look past but they were definitely there and i think that's sort of what i'm that that sort of made me turn the way i did was you know, kind of now that 2022 went the way it went, I look back on 2021, and it's like, man, there were some signs that, that, like that uh, a, a tail off could come. Nothing that uh, extreme. He really, uh, really struggled last year. Um, you know, as, as Keith Law shows here, 7.39 ERA with 20 homers allowed in 70 and two-thirds innings at AAA. Um, rough, 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 rough. Uh, so... Uh, I'm encouraged. It's kind of like what we talked about in the live stream where I talked about how high that Nick Pollock of, of Pitcher List had Kenta Maeda on his fantasy rankings um, and how encouraging I thought that was. Again, this is another one. Keith Law, even though I don't 
uh, agree with this ranking. I'm encouraged that somebody like Keith Law still views Jordan Balazovic in this high light. And, you know, it certainly makes me kind of wonder uh, um, what, you know, if it's valid to give him more of a free pass from last year and look beyond that. So I just found those couple things interesting to kind of wrap up our starting pitching discussion for the week. Uh, we'll be talking about the bullpen in our next live stream, so be on the lookout for that. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much to all the members. Here are the premium members. We'll talk again soon.